Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Foreign Minister, Mr. Secretary of State, it is with the greatest pleasure that I bid you welcome to the United States and to my home state of Texas. As a good friend, a great European, and as Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany. You have come to a part of our country where there are many Americans whose forebears came from Germany. So while all of us are your friends, there are many who feel a very personal relationship and who look forward to meeting you. We shall be working hard while you're here, but there will also be time to meet some of our neighbors, to see us as we are, and to join us in a Texas barbecue. It is our duty in these next two days to discuss the great tasks of the future. It is our good fortune to build on the work of great men who have gone before. To begin our labor together in a time when historic dangers have been turned back and hope for the future of freedom has been strengthened. So in that spirit, Mr. Chancellor, we meet today. We have much to do to strengthen the forces of freedom, to reinforce the Atlantic Partnership, to increase our cooperation with all free nations, new and old, and to enlarge the prospect of peace everywhere. In all that we do, we shall act together as the leaders of two free peoples who have proved their friendship with each other in trial and in triumph. So, Mr. Chancellor, once more let me tell you how happy all Americans are to have you here, and what a very special pleasure it will be for Mrs. Johnson and me to have you as our guests at our home. Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary of State, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the most friendly welcome which you, which you have accorded me here today. My party and I consider it as a privilege during those quiet days of Christmas to be with you in order to follow the message of Christmas and to do everything in our power to deepen and to enlarge the peace all over the world. That is our task. During those last 18 years, the friendship between our two peoples, and in fact between the statesmen of our two peoples, has grown ever more and become deeper and deeper. More and more we have realized that there are common tasks for us. More and more we have felt that our fate is a common one. And we in Germany know that peace and freedom are indivisible. They are not only indivisible in so far as the fierce spheres of life of the individual peoples are concerned, but peace and freedom are indivisible in so far as the cohesion of the free world altogether is concerned. You, Mr. President, in one of the darkest and most worrisome hours, have given hope and courage and confidence to the people of Berlin. And this deed, Mr. President, will never be forgotten. In the same way as the hearts of the Berliners opened up to the late President Kennedy. We, too, in some way, are starting our work from the same position. We are called upon to carry on a great heritage and to fructify that heritage. That is the sense of this meeting, that we, you, Mr. President, and I myself, should come into close human contact so as to have the confidence which exists between our two peoples deeply rooted in our two persons.
Again, Mr. President, let me tell you all the satisfaction and pleasure which I feel that we have so soon an opportunity of meeting and the hope which I have that this meeting will be a fruitful one. Mrs. Johnston, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, der Präsident der Vereinigten Staaten, der große Sohn... Mr. President, Mrs. Johnson, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, the great son of your country, has told me that if I speak German here, people will understand me better than they will understand him. Well, I would not exactly think so. But I should like to give expression to my deep satisfaction, I would even say happiness, to be able to dwell a little in this town, but most of all that I have had the opportunity, and we shall continue to have that later on today, to discuss with your president the common problems which mean the destiny of the world and decide over freedom and peace. We are meeting together in a common spirit, with new minds wide open to all ideas, and with common moral values filled with a deep sense of responsibility to not only our own nations, but to all people of goodwill all over the world. We want to fulfill something of the Christmas message, and so between Christmas and the New Year, we want to see to it that there shall be peace on earth. I thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. The future could bring to us nothing better than peace on Earth. And with the fate of the world in the hands of men like yourself and our beloved President Johnson, this will indeed come about. Thank you. Our guests will now step into the Pioneer Library briefly to visit this historic spot. For the benefit of you who may not be familiar, this is a replica of the original church that was built in Fredericksburg in 1847. Fredericksburg was founded by German colonists, 120 strong. They came in ox carts. They were of all faiths, but they were not able to construct churches for all creeds. They built a building of which this is an exact replica in size, shape, style, and here all creeds worshiped at a common altar. This unity has manifested itself in Fredericksburg, and we are proud that we stand shoulder to shoulder with all faiths today.
Father, we thank thee for these friends from across the waters. We thank thee for these friends and neighbors here at home. We ask thee to bless this food, forgive our sins, save us in thy kingdom, and give us a peaceful world. Amen. Well, I'm a picking up sunshine and handing out smiles. I got a long road to travel, but I love every mile. Heidi, come daddy, oh, daddy, oh, Heidi, Heidi, come daddy, oh. I'm a gathering rainbows and handing out. See, I got a sweet, sweet baby who's a fool about me. Whenever there's trouble, she's standing by my side. And when the going gets rough, I just roll with the tide. Heidi, come daddy, oh, daddy, oh. Heidi, Heidi, come daddy, oh. Flowing down to the sea I got a sweet, sweet baby Who's a fool about me Whenever there's trouble She's standing by my side And when the going gets rough I just roll with the tide Heidi, come daddy, oh, daddy, oh Heidi, Heidi, come daddy, oh Heidi, come daddy, oh, daddy, oh Heidi, Heidi, come daddy, oh Heidi, Heidi, come daddy, oh <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, distinguished guests, and my fellow Americans, last night at the ranch house, I told Dr. Earhart that I was a politician because of tragic circumstances and fiscal necessity had forced me to turn from a politician to an economist. I've spent the last month working on the federal budget. Dr. Earhart, on the other hand, is a most distinguished economist who, for other reasons, has had to become a politician. <laughs> Others have been writing and talking about the new diplomacy. The chancellor and I have been practicing it. We've had a wonderful two days together. We have formed a firm and lasting friendship personally. Our talks have been full and frank and full of candor, and I think have strengthened the bonds that exist between our two great countries. As I told the citizens of Free Berlin in 1961, and as I have pledged again during the last two days, we of the United States have made and intend to keep our promise that for the integrity of the people of Free Berlin, we will pledge our lives, our property, and our sacred honor. Mr. Chancellor, we have experienced a season of great shock here in America and great sorrow. But we stand before the world this morning, one nation, indivisible, under God. We work for peace as the American people have always worked. But like those pioneers who settled this land not many years ago, Pioneers who came from Germany, Mr. Chancellor, 
came in search of peace and freedom, we of this generation trust in the Lord and keep our powder dry. Mr. Chancellor, we shall never be too weary, never be too tired, never be too content or never too complacent to walk another mile toward peace with honor. Herr Präsident, Mrs. Johnson, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, vor dem Abschluss meines Besuchs beim amerikanischen Präsidenten Mr. President, Mrs. Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, before concluding this visit with the President of the United States, I would like to express my deep satisfaction and to tell you how happy I am about this meeting. We were both faced with the task of carrying on the heritage, not only of carrying it on, but of fructifying it. Wir haben gestern von der ersten Begegnung an bis abends und heute den Morgen, und ich glaube, es folgt noch eine weitere Aussprache zwischen uns, einmal uns ein Urteil. Yesterday, we worked from morning until night. This morning, we have continued working, and if I am not mistaken, we are even going to continue working after this barbecue, and during those talks, we have formed a judgment on the situation of the world, not only of the free world, but of East-West relations as a whole, and this judgment was a common one. I can only say here that we fully share our convictions, that we see matters exactly with the same eyes, and I think the secret of this understanding is that each of us has tried to penetrate and has successfully tried to do so into the very soul and tasks and heart and worries of the other. Ich war zutiefst beeindruckt von Ihrem Lande und es drängt mich zum Schluss auch noch das Lob von... I am deeply impressed with your country, but let me in conclusion of this speech turn to Mrs. Johnson and sing her praise because with the home-like atmosphere which she has created, she brought about a spirit for our talks which already was a guarantee of success. Mrs. Johnson, let me tell you I no longer feel as your guest. I feel at home with you. I am sure this is not going to be the last meeting. Ihnen, Herr Präsident, nochmal von ganzem Herzen Dank für den so außerordentlich freundlichen Willkommen, den Sie mir und meinen Mitarbeitern... Thank you again, Mr. President, for this wonderful, this magnificent welcome. These days in Texas will remain unforgotten, personally and as a political event. They will continue to be effective. They will continue to reign in our hearts. ladies and gentlemen.
the Merry Chorale to render one of our more serious works for you this afternoon. many farms. I think a lot of the people in the world, when they think of Texas music, picture a tall Texan riding across the range strumming a guitar. But there's one tall Texan who is more at home on the concert stage than on the range. The piano is his instrument. The world is his audience. Few other Americans have brought such glory to the United States through music. He is as well known and loved in Fredericksburg, Denmark, as in Fredericksburg, Texas. Today, he plays in a gymnasium in Stonewall, Texas. Next May, he will perform in the concert halls of Germany. Mr. President, Mr. Chancellor, we give you Van Clyburn. President Johnson, Your Excellence, Dr. Earhart, and all distinguished guests. As to what I was going to play, I decided, after having heard that one of President Johnson's favorite compositions was the Sonata Opus 57 by Beethoven, known as the Appassionata, I said it would probably be all right for Dr. Earhart, too. <laughs> <laughs> 